Hey there guys, welcome to this video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video I'm going to be talking about uh, linear functions especially for SAT math subject test uh, you know SAT which is supposed to be SAT subject test math level 2 right so there's, there's, there are a lot of videos that I've actually prepared for linear functions but this video only pertains to this exam so this is the second chapter I mean the second uh, the second video on uh, math level 2 you can actually watch the whole playlist where we have completed the whole course now let's go ahead and get started guys now what is a linear function a linear function the inception of the linear function we can start from the coordinate plane now this is the coordinate plane this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis a linear function is of the form a linear function has the maximum power of x is 1 that is what a linear function is the maximum power of x is 1 and uh, what we do is let's suppose there is this point over here and let's say this point is x1 comma y1 and let's suppose there is another point over here uh, let's say this point is let's say this one that is x2 comma y2 then this distance over here is going to be equal to y2 and this distance here is going to be equal to y1 so, and this distance over here is going to be equal to x1 and this distance here is going to be equal to x2 similarly this distance over here this distance over here is actually going to be equal to y2 minus y1 because this whole thing is y2 and this is y1 and this distance over here is going to be x2 minus x1 and if I join these points and this is a 90 degree triangle I can say that distance between these two points that means distance between any two points is given as square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square so what I'm using is I'm actually using the Pythagoras theorem to find out the distance between two points that means distance between two points is equal to square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square now this line that I've just joined this line over here is a linear function now why do I call this a linear function because for each value of x there is a single value of y and for a single value of y there is a single value of x so this is a linear function where x and y has kind of like one to one relationship now there are there is one thing that you can define in this linear function is is the slope of the linear function now slope of the linear function is actually equal to the rise of the line divided by the run of the line it tells you that if the line runs this distance by how much does the line rise so the rise is equal to y2 minus y1 and the run is equal to x2 minus x1 now as you say if I said this angle is theta then this angle is also theta y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is nothing but that is tangent theta because this is perpendicular and this is the base that means y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is tangent theta that means slope is also equal to the tangent of the angle that the line makes with the x-axis so that is what slope is now this is about slope and if I say let's suppose there are uh, you know I'll, I'll talk more about slope first let me define another thing let's say what is this point this point is known as the origin and this point is something which is 0 comma 0 and let's say there is any other point on the line let's say this point that is x comma y any point on the line in fact you can actually define every point on the line as x comma y then the slope of this line let's say m m is something that we denote the slope y is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 that means this becomes m is equal to y over x that means y is equal to mx now what is this this is going to be the equation of any line that passes through the origin it can be any line right let's suppose if it's like this let's say this is y is equal to x then this is let's say y is equal to 2x and let's say this is y is equal to 3x so you can pretty much define any line that passes through the origin by this equation y is equal to mx and the different values of m will give you different lines 
However, not all lines pass through the origin. Let's suppose if I have a parallel line passing through like this, then how do I define that line? Then you define that line using this point. This point is known as C, which is the Y intercept. This line is the point on the line when it cuts the Y axis and this distance is C. So basically what you're doing is you are picking up this line Y is equal to MX up by C units. So the equation of this line becomes Y is equal to MX plus C. Now this is the equation of a line. So this is the equation of a line. That is Y is equal to MX plus C where M is the slope of the line. C is the Y intercept of the line and X and Y are any points on the line. Fine. So that is what it is, right? So I hope you're able to understand what I'm trying to say here. Let me just elaborate more on that. Let me elaborate about slope. What is it about slope? Now, if two lines are parallel to each other, that means they would be making the same angle with the X axis. So if this is, let's say, line one and this is line two, then slope of line one will be equal to the slope of line two. So what I want to say is that if the lines are perpendicular, if the lines are parallel to each other, their slopes are going to be same. That means parallel lines have same slopes. If the lines are perpendicular to each other, right? let's suppose if I say if the lines are perpendicular to each other like this. Now if you see if this is 90 degrees, let's say this is theta, this is, this is theta, then what is going to be this angle? This angle is going to be the external angle which is going to be the sum of this angle and this angle. So this is going to be 90 plus theta. And as you know that tangent theta is nothing but a negative reciprocal of tangent 90 plus theta, something that you can verify it yourself as well. That means when the lines are perpendicular to each other, the product of their slopes is always equal to minus 1. So when the lines are perpendicular to each other, the product of their slopes is equal to minus 1. So this is an application that you have to remember and this is an application that you have to remember. Now another thing that I want to explain, what is the slope of x-axis? The slope of x-axis is 0 because it makes a 0 degree angle with the x-axis and pretty much there is no rise at all. What is the slope of y-axis? The slope of y-axis is infinite because slope is equal to rise over run and here the run is 0 means the, the, the line is not moving at all towards anywhere. That means the run is 0 here. Anything over 0 is going to be infinite. Technically speaking, tan 90 is infinite. And what is the slope of this line that makes an angle 45 degrees with the x-axis? Tan 45 is 1. The slope of this line is 1. That means the rise is exactly equal to the run. Another thing, the slope of this line is going to be negative 1. Because as you can see, as the line is running, the slope is, de the, the, you know, the y value is decreasing, which is why this line has a negative slope. So any line that passes through this and this part of the, of the coordinate plane is going to have a negative slope. And any line that passes through this and this part has a positive slope. Let's say pick up any line. Let's say you want to pick up this line. And you would say this line is passing from this and this. No, eventually this line will pass from here and will pass from here. So any line passing through the first and the fourth quadrant is going to have a negative slope. Any line passing through the second and the third quadrant is going to have a positive slope. Until and unless that line is parallel to either of the axes, well, that's a different story altogether because then the any line here is going to have slope 0 and any line here is going to have slope infinite. So I hope you're able to understand what I'm trying to say here, guys. So let me go ahead and, uh, you know, revise everything that I just said before we hit the questions. First of all, uh, distance between any two points can be given as the distance between any two points can be given as square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. Another thing that I wanted to say is midpoint of two points. Let's suppose there are two points. Uh, x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2. I want to find the midpoint of this point. So the midpoint coordinates would be x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. These would be the midpoint coordinates. Another thing, the slope of the line is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is the change in y by the change in x. And uh, 
you know that is actually equal to the tangent of the theta that the line makes with the x-axis if the two lines are parallel to each other then their slopes are equal if the two lines are perpendicular to each other the product of their slopes is equal to negative 1 another thing is uh, the equation of the line is given by y is equal to mx plus c where c is the y intercept that is the value of y when x is 0 another thing that I like to define here is called the x intercept that is the value of x when y is 0 so if I have this line this point over here is known as the y intercept and this point over here is known as the x intercept and as you can clearly see that this distance over this distance will also give you the slope because that is also tangent theta that means slope is also equal to y intercept over the x intercept something that will make you a little bit more quick so hope you're able to understand what I'm trying to say here guys let's move forward to the questions okay all right so the question is asking what is the slope of the line passing through these two points so that would be y2 minus y1 so y2 I'm sorry y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so that is going to be equal to negative 3 positive 2 over negative 5 which is going to be equal to negative 1 over 5 there you go let's move forward to the next one I recommend you to pause this video and try this question out by yourself okay so what is the slope slope of this line so first of all you have to bring the line in this format y is equal to mx plus c where m will be the slope so 8x plus 12y plus 5 is 0 let's make y as the subject 12y is equal to negative 8x and negative 5 y is equal to negative 8 over 12x minus 5 over 12 that means the slope that is m is equal to negative 8 over 12 which is negative 2 over 3 there you go let's move out to the next one the slope of line perpendicular to this line so we're gonna find the slope of this line first so the slope of this line is going to be equal to uh, first of all 3x plus 8 is going to be equal to 5 times y y would be equal to 3 over 5x plus 8 over 5 that means the slope of this line is 3 over 5 now when the lines are perpendicular the product of their slopes is equal to negative 1 so if the slope of this line is 3 over 5 then the slope of other line would be when I take this to that side is actually going to be negative 5 by 3 so I hope you're able to understand this also that's very very easy uh, let's move forward to the next one guys let's see this question it says the y intercept of the line that passes through two points whose coordinates are this so what we have to do is we have to find the y intercept of the line Now the line passes through this point and this point and since we have to find the y intercept y intercept is going to be this because x will always be zero for the y intercept now you can see the slope here should be equal to the slope here because it's the same line isn't it so the slope is always same throughout the line so what is the slope here y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 that should be equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so this is going to be equal to 5 over negative 4 that is equal to c minus 3 over negative 1 that means 5 is equal to 4c minus 12 that means 4c is equal to 17 and c is equal to 17 over 4 there you go so I hope you're able to understand this part that slope here is equal to the slope here and then this is how we solve this kind of question let's move forward to the next one he says the slope of the line perpendicular to this line again it's a very easy question 3x minus 5y plus 8 is 0 that means 5y is 3x plus 8 that means y is I think this question is coming again so we've already done this question okay let's move forward to this one this one says that the equation of the line equation of the perpendicular bisector of the segment joining whose coordinates are this so what we have to do is we have to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector now what's a perpendicular bisector now if I join make these points this is 1 comma 4 1 comma 4 and negative 2 comma 3 negative 2 comma 3 
So this is a line. He says the equation of perpendicular bisector. So a perpendicular bisector. Now when you say bisector, that means this this point is equal to this point. First of all, let's say this is line L and this is let's say line M. So for line L, the slope of line L would be equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is going to be equal to 1 over 3. So if the slope of this line is 1 over 3, the slope of this line would be equal to 1 over 3 into the slope of this line would be equal to negative 1 because they are perpendicular to each other. That means slope of this line would be negative 3. That means the slope of this line is negative 3 and this line passes through which point? This line passes through this point which is the midpoint of these two points. So how do you find the midpoint of these two points? The midpoints would be x y 4 plus 3 over 2 that is 3.5 and 1 minus 2 over 2 which is negative 0 0.5. So this point is equal to this. How did I find this? 4 plus 3 over 2 and 1 minus 2 over 2 because it's x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2 basically I've actually written it the other way around it's supposed to be negative 0 0.5 and 3.5 because you know I've done the y2 y1 minus y2 part later right so so the slope of the line so the slope of the line is equal to negative 3 and the line passes through minus 1 over 2 and 7 over 2 that's the case here so y is this, x is this, and m is this. So y is equal to m times x plus c. So this is going to be equal to uh, 3 over 2 plus c. That means c is equal to 7 over 2 minus 3 over 2, which is going to be equal to 4 over 2, which would be 2. That means, what is the equation of the line? The equation of the line is y is equal to m, what is m? Negative 3, x plus this, which is 2. Right, so this is the equation of the line, which is actually equal to y plus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. So where is y? Where is y plus 3x minus 2 equal to 0? This one. So I hope you're able to understand this part over here, guys. This was a little lengthy question, but this can be solved in so many different ways. Uh, you know, that it's actually, you can solve it in so many ways. You can eliminate, you can, but this is the, this is the way that I can think of right now. So, uh, that's the answer. So I hope you're able to understand this point over here, guys. So the question is asking, what is the distance between these two points? So that use the distance formula. Distance between two points is given by x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. So the distance will actually be equal to square root of x2 minus x1, which is negative 9 square, plus y2 minus y1, 5 square. That is actually equal to square root of 81. Uh, that is equal to square root of 81 plus 25, which will be equal to square root of 106. Now square root of 106 uh, is going to be more than 100 for sure and from here I can see this is something uh, you know it's uh, you know 10.3 is something which actually makes up for that answer you can use your calculator to find the answer so that's not a problem at all so I hope you're able to understand here also let's move forward to this one this one says the slope of the line parallel to this line so when the lines are parallel their slopes are same so what is the slope of this line this is 2x plus 3y is equal to 8. That means 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 8. I'm trying to bring it to y is equal to mx plus c format. y is equal to negative 2 over 3x plus 8 over 3. As you can see, this is the slope. So this is the slope. Fine. So uh, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. In this video, I have covered all the possible types of questions that can actually come uh, in the SAT math subject test for linear functions and we're going to be finishing this course we're going to be making sure that this course covers everything about SAT math subject test so that no stone is left unturned and uh, just make sure that you visit this website give us your give us your valuable like at facebook.com slash perfect course and give us your valuable feedback at this email address so this would be about this guys thank you very much for watching I'll see you in the next one